quite an incredible podcast with Serbian coach Mr. Vladislav Herić, commonly known as Coach Herić. He has worked at top clubs as the manager, as the head coach in South Africa. What was amazing about this podcast was that he gave a complete real picture of what the life of a professional club's manager is like, what the life of a professional coach is like. Without sugarcoating anything, he said it the way it is with some good examples of his life. And it's really a good, whoever's going to listen to this is going to enjoy this massively. Hopefully it does not turn away people from their ambition of being a head coach because it's still a very, very amazing and a dream position to be in. Coach Herich gives the reality of what his experience was like. A coach who has won a lot, a coach who's been highly successful. So tune in. Another wonderful day today on this podcast. We have a very, very successful senior professional coach, Mr. Vladislav Herich, who is commonly known as Coach Herich, a Serbian professional football coach who has spent a lot of time in South Africa working with some top professional clubs. So, Coach Herich, welcome on this podcast. So, um, yes, let's hear about your football journey right from Serbia to South Africa. Well, look, uh, I was in university, just finished university and uh, stayed there like for kind of... Uh, I must say for more experience for for like after studies and kind of things like that. Then uh, one uh, coach from Nigeria came to university and asked my mentor that he need uh, uh, two to three coaches to to travel with him to be the part of national team. So one supposed to be under 19, one under 17. And uh, my mentor asked me, why am I willing to go abroad and go somewhere else, go in Africa and try to help these people? Because in Yugoslavia those days, later on in Serbia now, actually, we are always minded that we have to go and help the, the area actually uh, where, where, where they need development, where they need kind of guidance and stuff like that. So from that perspective, I jumped to for that opportunity to go there in Nigeria and try to help the national team. Although we just 10 days before we supposed to travel, the minister, minister of sport, I think Mr. Williams had a, a helicopter crash and we never went there. All in all, uh, I, uh, uh, I remained in the books of this guy, we call it Costa Papic, who actually later on invited me in South Africa when he gets there a couple of years later. So I came, I jumped to Orlando Paris to help him for some backup job and uh, to work with the players. Uh, he had the, he was the head coach in Orlando Pirates in South Africa and he helped, I jumped to help him like to work with the players who they are not traveling, uh, who need the, who need the, who needed the uh, individual trainings because we all know that technical development was very poor in, in, in all continent. So, so I, that's how I jump in. Later on, uh, some uh, club from PSL uh, asked me to help them to escape relegation, which was Mac Leopards. And uh, uh, obviously, I get there. After three games, we get, uh, I think, five points. And then I save the club. And that's how I start the journey to, you know, to go there, to go around there and actually be part of professional football in South Africa. That was my starting starting point. That's brilliant. And as we progress in this podcast, we'll we'll get to know about all your achievements. But before that, could you describe your coaching style, please? Look, my coaching style uh, uh, is uh, attacking style of football. I like to score goal more than opponent. Uh, I don't mind consider goal too. Uh, I'm not the one who parking the bus, no matter what is opponent, uh, no matter what is the size of the team I'm facing or the reputation of the team I'm having against me. I never fear opponent as a player and I never fear the opponent as a coach. And I always try to figure out uh, the biggest point uh, and try to utilize the, obviously, the actually uh, the, the weak part of the opponents that try to score the goal. Uh, and to be honest, I must say that 
I, mostly I was always I was involved with the so-called small teams in this country, and I have very good, uh, very good uh, record where when I played against big fishes. Okay. Uh, where let's say uh, I think 2008. Uh, I managed to beat Sandals twice in one week away with the team who was just promoted in PSL. Imagine. Wow. So, so I have I like those challenges. I like these big clubs, so called, and I like that. And this is my, this is my, I'm gonna say, uh, uh, favorite games, if I may say like that. So my football is like attacking. I attack everyone. I don't care what is the. But his opponents obviously try to build the appropriate tactic and prepare the players for that. You can't yeah. just go like a headless chicken. You have to have a proper strategy. Yeah. From, from another point of view, uh, uh, the, the style of football is like progressive passes. I like to play full pass forward. I avoid the I avoid the the, the pass to the keeper and stuff like that. Uh, uh, look in UEFA A license and pro license. Everyone teach you those. Uh, Instructors teach you to to play with a goalkeeper as a, as a sweeper or as a libero, if yes. I may say like that. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Uh, obviously, they told us this is the option, but I didn't take this option. I could see a lot of my colleagues did. I disagree with that. Uh, I believe that uh, to play the goalkeeper for uh, in the, as a part of build up. Yeah. It's a it's a showing the weakness of players that they cannot m make proper build up so to have to pass the keeper. For me, from my point of view, it's still a, uh, it's still weakness if you have to pass the keeper. The keeper supposed to be option, not the not the part of build up. That's uh, my philosophy. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. Obviously. Uh, I'm talking from experience. Uh, I tried maybe sometimes to do that, but I could see that that will never work. And uh, especially, especially there. Why I'm saying this because uh, 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 the keep keep up uh, goalkeepers probably in in, uh, in let's say uh, usual terminology they're working harder than others. They have a very difficult preparation because. Keeper have no right to make mistake. We all know that. And uh, in in so difficult uh, uh, methodology of working, it's so difficult. Now you have to add another technique for him to pass around, get him into the small side games to play rather than to be the keeper. I don't know. For me, this is this is not this is not uh, option that I will take. I I uh, just saying my, my opinion and my experience there. So uh, I have, I like build up, I like passing football, but my pass is that progressive. So this is type of football I would like to, to, to uh, actually imp uh, uh, implement in my game. So let's say if I'm the coach of uh, whatever Filipini and I play Brazil, I will start. I will still try to attack the Brazil and try to score the goal. So uh, this is type of. This is the type of football I'd like, and this is my philosophy. It quite, takes quite some courage, I mean, to attack regardless of the strength of the opponents. And from what I understand, then, when you try and recruit a keeper, it must be based prime, mainly on their shot-stopping ability rather than their ability with the feet. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, I mean it's a it's a different uh, philosophy, but you've you've achieved success with it, so nobody can really question. So, uh, some, some a bit about your life. Now you're from Serbia, but you've been in South Africa since two thousand and five, uh, and you have a South African wife, and most of your coaching life you have spent coaching South African clubs. So, what made you fall in love for the country to this extent? Uh Look, uh, I don't know. It's like something very strange. I love these people. I love these people, and the, uh, uh, the fact that I remain here for like almost twenty years shows actually that I didn't come here because of the money. I didn't come here because of my career, whatever. I came here to try to 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 help uh, the football uh, to make the progress that foot, uh, for the football football environment to make the progress. Yeah. And obviously, go off and, and win the World Cup if it's possible. Yeah. Although 
uh, my aim is still the same. I did not change, but I think I'm going to change now because I realized that after 20 years, I didn't do much. Okay. I didn't do much because I have a lot of closed doors. I have a lot of interruption. I have a lot of uh, xenophobia here and a lot of problems. And I could tell you that however hard I try, I, I, I never, I never achieve what I wanted. Okay. So <clears throat> in end of the day, now I ask myself, but after 20 years, when I turn to see what I did, I did not, you know, unfortunately I have to say that. And uh, I was, I was very unfortunate. The people never see my input. The, the people never see there is the changes. They there's a very big jealousy here that if you achieve something, you they they put a stick in your in your wheels and they're trying to interrupt much as is possible. Yeah. This is very, very strange environment. It's very, very hard, very hard to work here. When you ever get the club, it's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. It's very it's a very very specific uh, environment, I must be honest. So from the other side, uh, I didn't want to go to other countries actually. Uh, I wanted to help my wife to raise two kids we have here. Yeah. And uh, it's easier if you close her. It's easy to jump here in and out. And, you know, when you're here, then it's, then it's easy. At the end of the day, the family matters most. Yeah. I found beautiful family here. My wife, Michelle, is beautiful. She's uh, not beautiful like face, but beautiful soul. And uh, she's very good. Uh, she's a very good woman. And uh, we actually met perfectly. So... But probably that's the reason why I spent almost 20 years in South Africa. That's, a, that's quite an incredible story. We will also go into more detail with what you had said um, initially. Now, uh, you have been, I would say you have had a very successful career because you have won two promotions and you have survived nine relegations. Not many coaches can say they have survived nine relegations. So can you tell me, can you describe the environment for a coach in both the scenarios, so for a club that is that is you know on their high horse going for promotion, as well as a club that is mainly looking to survive, as a coach, how is the environment different for you? Look, Ryan, uh, we all know a coaching job is one of the most difficult and one of the worst, I'm saying, yeah. in regard of keep keeping the job and feeding the family. So very very difficult, very tricky. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> it's a very ungrateful job, I must say. Yeah. Uh, where you are guilty even if driver didn't uh, put the petrol in a, in, a, in a van, you're still guilty and you get fired for that. We all know that. Uh, the problem is like, maybe I'm going too far now, but I have to give some, uh, some fundament so that we can talk further. Yeah. Uh, in Europe, coach have much more much more open uh, platform to for for request to make uh, what he wants to make. They will do everything to support the coach ideology from scratch. Uh, if I may say just one one small digression, like uh, or actually reminder where when coach uh, I think Van Hal came to. Uh, I'm not sure, but in Bayern Munich, uh, he, he changed 19 people, he brought 19 people with him. Yeah. Uh, so, but when, do, the, when after that you don't have a result and you get fired, maybe I can understand. Mm -hmm. But uh, in South Africa, you can't bring anyone. You cannot even bring your assistant. You must, you must get assistant that they give you, and then you have to deliver the result. This is almost impossible, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this uh, other things after two defeats, you already on the uh, on the on the on the standby. Yeah. Where other football administrators is they are they are waiting for your dad so that they can call the coach and put him in and ask money from him for what they have they have done. Okay. If you understand what I'm saying. Yes. So it's very very difficult to work like that. I'm I'm talking freely. I'm talking openly. I'm talking how it goes. Yeah. Because people need to know that people, I, I can see people that, you know, especially now, now in the, in the public media, they they are talking nonsense, but they don't know what is going on. Right. Anyway. So, <laughs> so this is the environment we've been to it. But when the problem starts, then they remember you. 
mm-hmm. you know. And then they slightly give you some kind of, yeah, just save the club. That's why I have nine, nine saved, right? Yeah. There is one club I couldn't save. And unfortunately, we has, I has been told that we have light complexion in the bank. Imagine. Okay. Imagine. Yeah. So this club I, I couldn't save, right? After 20 games, kind of. Yeah. But yeah. we have 36 points, imagine. So it was it was very difficult. But nine saving comes from from that way. That, let's say from uh, there is the club here, Tipo United. I did that three times. They told me first times to promote the team, which I did. So mm-hmm. we were four points behind of half season. In yeah. end of the season, we were three games before and already promoted with ten points ahead. Okay. After that, I was fired. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Imagine somebody fire the coach after that. Right. Okay. Then, then they come to PSL. After a couple of months, they call me again. Now that they're struggling, they call me again. So now I jump in. I save the club. I get fired again. Yeah. Yeah. It's after three years, four years, they they're struggling again. They call me again. I go third time. They I I rescue the club and I get fired again. Imagine. So this is the environment we're all into. I'm really Until... enjoying, I'm really enjoying this because you're really giving everybody the actual picture of the life of a manager of a head coach. But yes, continue. Look, to be uh, when people ask me, but if they fire you, if they humiliate you, why you get back? I will explain that. When when I was fired in cheaper, the the supporters were very cross, hmm. right? And this is the town. This is town called Port Elizabeth, where I promoted the team before that, like 10 years ago, called Bay United. And so I bond I bond with all this environment. They love it me because I never lost the game at home. Right. Yeah. Now, now they're calling me every day, 50, 60 calls the or messages, coach, please go come back, save, save the club. Da, 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 da. So I jumped there because of these people. Yeah. The right. Emotional connection. So, yes, it's always I always come back in certain clubs because of the people. Yeah. Right. Which maybe I'm wrong. I shouldn't undermine the dig, uh, uh, dignity of my family and myself and this and that. But in end of the day, football belongs to people, not to my family only. Right. Yeah. So this is why. This is why I jumped there several times, rescued the club. That's why I have so many, so yeah. many clubs saving there in a, in a, in a sea. Right. But uh, I mean, you've really given a, a very, very clear picture and a real picture to what life is like. And, you know, you gave an example that two games, if you're not winning, suddenly <clears throat> people talk about your job. So now sacking is obviously a very big part of any football coach. If you're not sacked, you're not really a, a football manager. So how do you deal with that pressure? Look, it's very, it's much more harder for my family because my daughter's crying, my my family is sad and they see me like, uh, you know, somebody who actually was wounded in a battle. Mm, yes. But for, for me, for me, like, I'm cross, but the uh, uh, following day, I'm already myself and I and I, uh, when I come into the club, I wear my suit. And when I leave, I also wear my suit. Okay. So I never, I never see myself defeated on that point of view. Yeah. If result is not on my side, there is million, million reasons. Not only one reason that I make mistake because of substitution or maybe didn't approach the game properly or those kind of things. There is always million, million reasons before that that interrupted the game already. Mm-hmm. So I do I do ask myself what I did wrong. That's normal. Every 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 person have uh, self critics. So so do I. And then I then I analyze maybe I could do one two three. But everyone is smart after the battle, you know. Everyone is general after the battle. So uh, in end of the day. I stay behind my decision and I stay behind everything I did mm-hmm. because I tried my best. But uh, uh, it hurts when the, your own club treated you like you scored a goal against 
you apply. It's like you are the one who scored the goal for opponents. So that's how we have been treated in, a, in the meetings, right. stuff like that. So it's uh, it's very very hard, but uh, you go you go over it uh, easy as a coach. As you say, you are not the coach if you're not fired at least once. Right. So foot, football, I think the head coach position is glamorous from the outside. But today, I think it's all about you giving a real picture. So continuing on that now, job security is still big for many coaches. So are there, are, just for to give an idea to other professional coaches, are there any particular ways you have used to maintain a healthy relationship with the club's hierarchy so that, so that they give you more time and uh, freedom to do your job? Look, there were, there were the clubs here where I has been given the freedom. Yeah. Right? And I make tremendous success on those, those let me say, two clubs. Yeah. There's only two clubs that I've been here out of 15, yeah. 16, three actually, where, where, where I had completely freedom. In Bay United, I found these people 15th on the log in first division. Okay. Right? So six matches to go, we, we, we rescued the club and the following year we were promoted to PSL. Mm. And then we beat all of these big guys. We beat Orlando Pirates 2-0, we beat Sandal Chiefs, all of those big guys. Yeah. We were in the middle of the rock and then I get fired. Mm. Because, yeah. because they say we're not going to be in top four, which they claim it without me always. Okay. So... So when 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 I got fired, obviously, without the reason, because yeah. uh, uh, imagine yourself year and a half ago, you are you are uh, next to last in first division. Now you in PSL in middle of the log after one and a half year. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah. This is huge success, but they didn't see it like that. They seen it like a failure that I failed them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. But that just explained my previous statements about the difficulty of working in this country. It's... And, uh, and uh, the, the another one is like, <clears throat> I was in Ajax. Yeah. Ajax, that's a very, uh, Ajax is probably the, the most interesting story. I was part of Ajax Amsterdam. They, were, they, had, uh, they had franchise here in Cape Town. 51% they were, they were main shareholders. Yeah, and I work. I end up there with team under twenty one. I has been called. <clears throat> I has been called. <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. I've been called for like uh, develop the players because they they told me that they have no one to sign for the for the senior team and it's disaster there. They're not happy what happens there. Yeah. And they were last on the log because there is reserve league here yeah, those days pending. I think there's still this reserve league on. Uh, it's reserve league who uh, include those uh, kids under 21. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So they were last on the log. When I came in, I was seven matches to go. They they played eight matches. We played only 15 games. It was yeah. only one one round. Uh, it's long story why we play like that. Yeah. That already shows that they don't think about development by doing this. And uh, we, they played eight games. They lost six. They drew twice. So I had two points. When I jump in, I found it's actually my colleague who was the head coach there. And he called me to help him, Roger the Sun. Okay. And uh, uh, <clears throat> after three months, we finished that league. I had seven games, five five. Five times we won, one draw, one lose, one loss. Okay. And after, uh, and we end up like six, seven on the log. And then, which uh, was small success, but uh, the main part is coming now. So we, as the Ajax, we every year participating in a, in a, in an Amsterdam tournament where big big European uh, clubs they are joined also and they they are competing. So this year we were there uh, and tournament in that tournament in Amsterdam was Ajax, obviously, Amsterdam, PSV Eindhoven, uh, Tottenham, uh, Barcelona, etc. And we won that tournament. Oh. Imagine South African Flyers. Yes. We got a gold medal. Yes. After 
After one week, we jump to another tournament because they set the two tournaments for us for better kind of experience in Europe and this and that. Yeah. In another tournament, it was much more South American teams, Atletico Palmeiras and this guy's, I think, Oberhaus in Bruges. Dortmund, I, I think, and I don't know who. It was also very, very, uh, very strong tournament. Yeah. We won that one too. Okay. Yes. That's so we came back with two gold medals from two tournaments in Europe, beating all these people. Imagine. Yeah. When I came back, my boss redu uh, reduced my salary. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. So in any country, in any club in the planet Earth, if you do this, mm. imagine I come to India, yeah. imagine this, yeah. and I prepare the players for one year, I jump to the Europe and beat all of these guys and come back. What will happen in India? Will be made. Right. Yes. But here, you have the problem if you're successful. Problem. It, yeah, it's a... Right. Yes, it's a ruthless job. I mean, it's really there. There isn't too much logic in this, basically. But uh, also, I didn't. I didn't work in other countries in Africa. But pe pe my colleagues and uh, and the, and the and the people, my my, my country mates who working around, and they've been here after this experience here. They told me, no, this is most difficult, the most difficult environment to work in. But are there any ways, because you have so much experience with such environments, are there any ways that you have used, any methods you have used so that, you know, your relationship with the owner of the club can become better? Look, uh, uh, I never had problem with any, any owner. Okay. Ever. Okay. The problem is the other people around the owner. Mm -hmm. Because here in South Africa, everyone is trying to put his own coach. Yeah. on the platform so that they can ask money from him. Right. So this is how things works here. Most, not everyone, there is the clubs who actually follow proper proper football setup and they, not, not everyone, but there is mo uh, most of the clubs I used to work for, that was the setup. So the, so when, if you, if you think they have problem with your owner, I never had a problem with the owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But the people, because of this jealousy, was uh, trying to put somebody else in to claim some money. Yes. You end up like you are the worst enemy of the club, which you're not, definitely. Even, otherwise, uh, why would I... I mean, I'm the coach. Why would I create the problems? <laughs> I yes. mean, nobody's stupid yet. Right, right. But, but uh, uh, this is the, like... Uh, it's unexplainable. Like my wife said, the way you were treated in this country, it's, it's insane. So there isn't any, basically there isn't any blueprint to how one can successfully deal with every problem. So again, just reiterating what you had said initially that even if the, if there's no petrol in the, in the bus, in the car, it's the, the manager's fault. But uh, now I also would like to know some examples from you, if at all. Have you ever faced any interfering owners or any interference from the people below the owners? If so, like if you can give us certain examples. If you want to give the names, you can. If you don't, that's also fine. I'm definitely not going to mention the names here because I don't want to be like yeah. the one who is like exposing people. But right. uh, I definitely have a lot of, lot of problems regarding to interference. Yeah. And I'm very famous on, on the one who doesn't take uh, nonsense from anyone yeah. in regards of, uh, of uh, team selection, uh, coaching methodology and stuff like that. Look, uh, Ryan, uh, uh, I, I, I studied that. I studied football. I have football university degree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So... Uh, the, the, so definitely, I know what I'm doing yeah. because I has been educated as such. Yeah. Right. Uh, because uh, besides this UEFA A pro whatever, which is uh, very disrespectful to the university diplomas and degrees, okay. from my point of view, they should not do that with the people who have diplomas like this. Imagine people in Spain, they study six, seven years to be the coach. Yes. Imagine. Mm. So you cancel that university degree if you don't have pro license or UF or whatever license, you cannot coach the team. Really? Mm. Really? Mm. 
but this is nonsense. So as such, now you go into the club. Imagine now you, you have a lot of money, Ryan. Yeah. You buy the hospital because you want to help people. Yeah. Can you do surgery? No, it's Can you? the experts. You must call someone who have degree for that, who knows what is he doing, right? Yes. <clears throat> now you see, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. In a hospital, there will be the patient treated properly and they walk home. There will be the patient who die. Yes. Right. Okay. So can you go now to tell the doctor? No, but the patient died like two years ago, two days ago. Let me come in and tell you how to do operation. You can't do that. Mm. Yeah. Right. right. So, but there is the request where chairman or some authorities have to go to coach to say, listen, do me a favor. The people from UK is they're coming here in our country to see this player. Can you put can you make a plan for this boy to play? Mm. Right. Or the, the potential sponsor, big company is coming here. Is the, but they love this guy. Can you make some plans somehow? Then you then you obviously understand that yeah. you prepare the player right. to start the game. But here people come Friday night to tell you who to play Saturday morning, afternoon. And how do you react to that? I refuse. Mm -hmm. I deny that. Yeah. I refuse. And how do they take it? They take it personal. Okay. So it's yeah. very, very difficult, very right. difficult. So, right. but so far, I still keep that uh, flag of dignity high. So I don't, I don't know. Probably that's why I'm without the club already long time. Uh, no, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, there will be a few clubs who actually appreciate a coach like you. Uh, now, yes, coaching is passion. Coaching is because uh, because it's football and all that stuff. But we all need to earn money. Now, you are not shy to say that you have changed a lot of clubs, but now, you know, earning a livelihood and maintaining a family is important. So as a coach who for whom job security is always a challenge, regardless of any coach in the world, how do you look after, how do you plan your finances and how do you plan your family life? Look, uh, I'm now keen to to change the country. Yeah. Uh, unless something happened here drastically, some changes of somebody invest because it's good to invest in a football here. Okay. Right? Where the where the where the small the proper setup, you still can you still can buy the club here and win the league in three years. I'm okay. talking about PSL. Okay. Right? Mm. And uh, I definitely learn how to do that in 20 years. Uh, been here and working in professional level. Yes. And there is there is still good people here and good uh, and honest and and people with uh, with good knowledge, dignity, and with with with, with progress mind, with yeah. a sense of of making progress and, and get get uh, those on uh, country in next level. Yeah. So there is still people that you can work with, and uh, if. But if if nobody buys the club here, and, and I'm not in, I'm definitely keen to change environment and to go somewhere else. Right, and but uh, you would still require some kind of planning, right? So how 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 do you plan your like in a situation like this, or rather in the in the past years that you have you have coached in South Africa? How have you planned your finances to be secure? How have you planned your family life so that everyone's happy? But look, I definitely have to to have backup job there. Eh? Uh, now it's uh, it's good that we have uh, we have some kind of in, investment here online, okay. where definitely you can I don't know some cryptos or whatever. So Elon Musk, you invest in Netflix in a show max. That's a lot of opportunity. Yeah. So you, I definitely ask for some advices who can advise me to where to invest the money and definitely. Uh, that creates some income uh, which will be independent from football, right? Right. But uh, I'm still not done in football. I still have a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm, I must say, yes. to help people to get football better and to share my knowledge and experience I have with other people 
who will uh, who will who are willing to make the progress and therefore yes. learn something and get themselves in the next level because uh, I still didn't leave any legacy and I'm mm. not happy with that. Uh, I definitely have to go leave some legacy somewhere where people can say, okay, at least uh, we painted that uh, lines around the football field as the coach Herich wanted. So. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know. There is still a platform for me to jump and work and help uh, other people to progress. Indeed, I'm, I really hope that you achieve that. Uh, now, because of your knowledge and experience working with so many clubs, a bit of advice for a lot of coaches because there might be brilliant coaches, but not everyone knows how to negotiate a contract. So um, according to you, now salary is, of course, the main thing that, that every coach needs to um, negotiate for. But what are the other components that coaches should also negotiate for, apart from salary? But they definitely have to uh, uh, to secure the independence of uh, make decision making. Yeah, they have to protect those integrity. They have to protect the methodology of their work, yeah. and that definitely must be something in a, in a contract uh, uh, written as a as a, as an agreement. Yeah, of both of both sides and definitely this is the first thing that comes to my mind for I and mean, uh, to advise the the young coaches yeah they have to keep that integrity high because football will go nowhere if they allowed people to jump in and tell them what to do right. people won't go there now the things not everything uh what you have a b c or whatever pro license tell you this is exactly how it goes yeah. Open your mind, open your ears, your eyes, and use everything from there what makes sense for you. Yeah. What it, it, it's not, you change it and do as you think is right. Yeah. Even the instructors of these courses will tell you the same thing. Yeah. So this is the only, only message that I can I can pass to the young colleagues. And obviously wish them all the best and be better than I am and and uh, have peaceful job as much as possible. Right. So uh, in terms of the contact negotiation part, from what I understand, one has to make sure that the freedom, that your power is never really played around with. Right? Yeah. So uh, you have also coached some fantastic players in your in your tenure in South Africa. You have coached Tashrik Matthews, you have coached Leo Thetani, you have coached Dean Solomons. Now, these are players who have gone abroad to big clubs, Dortmund and Ajax. So what made what was it like coaching them? And what do you think was the difference that these three players reached such a high level? Look, uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, fortunately, uh, I made coaching manual for South African players. Okay. Right. So that has been based on all of my knowledge and experience that I've been through all of these clubs and stuff like that. Obviously, by having the family from this country, I learned the mentality of the people. And yeah. that also played a big role for me to, to make a football manual for that, for development. And look, I'm the development coach and I passed all. Uh, all all possible stages to uh, before I became senior coach. So I've been in development from seven to twelve, yeah. from twelve to eighteen. I was even involved in a uh, women soccer, women football team yeah. for one and a half year. So I pass all of those. Uh, I must say uh, periods, stages. Yes, areas. And I learn from them a lot. And yeah. obviously, as a such, who, who came here and spent so many years here yeah. and learned about people and mentality, I readjusted my coaching methodology. For like 60 to 70%, I changed it since I came here, I'm going to be yeah. honest. Yeah. And uh, uh, that success in Amsterdam with Leo Titani and, the, and, and those guys actually shows me yeah, the next year we beat uh, Man United, Real Madrid. <laughs> so, so that that journey when that journey when Ajax continue next year, yes. where the club signed six seven players. Imagine that money. Yeah. Imagine that money. Yes. And then uh, I think seven or eight players were had the national team call under twenty one. 
So in two years time, one and a half from 16 to on the log, no one to be signed. Yeah. You have this after one and a half year. From November to June next year, imagine. Right. So uh, I'm I'm saying that not because I want to talk about me. No, I'm saying that because the the coaching manual uh, and the and the mental toughness program I built it yeah. works perfect, okay. perfect. So the very good things is like I would try. I will I will die to try this same coaching manual somewhere else where development is needed. Right. I want to see does it works. Yeah. Not only for South Africa because it's specially made. Uh, mental toughness program call it train the mind the body will follow. Okay. Yeah. Wise words. So that concept of of method uh, of the part that of full concept of methodology of coaching the young players works out by first time sending the players to Europe from this club. Okay, right. clear ambitions, yes. Yeah, that's that's good. And so obviously you have, your, despite working in, in uh, professional football, you've still got a lot of interest for youth development. Now, with regards to youth development, you are also the owner of an academy, Bay City Football Academy. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, look, uh, we, uh, the, the town that I made probably best bond with the people was Port Elizabeth. Now they call it Quebec. They changed the name. Right. And uh, I don't know how many hundreds of people they call me and to open football academy. Okay. Well, I did open football academy a year or two before Corona strikes. Okay. Obviously, Corona strikes, we had to pay rent, we had to pay our expenses, and yeah. the, all of this money that I had on the side actually died in this period where you have to pay everything, but actually you couldn't compete. It was that time for people worldwide. Yeah. And actually that Corona killed all of our money, all of our investments, and unfortunately we lost the premises as well. Oh. And then now this academy is now on standby. I'm waiting for municipality to come back to me because they spotted some land where they maybe, maybe can give me that land to build the academy from scratch. So I will, I will, I'm trying now to rent on my name that land. Okay. Or buy it, I don't know, and then establish the football academy there. Yes. Because uh, I'm not going to give up that easy, right? Right. And you also create a legacy doing that. Now, uh, some more, uh, I want, I mean, this is again advice for a lot of coaches. So, you know, you, a lot of your press conferences are found on YouTube. So now uh, th there's a big saying that uh, winning the press conference is as important as winning the match. So do you have any advice on how to deal with uh, press conferences? In press conference, uh, you um, you have to be most diplomatic than any than anywhere else in your life. So you tell them uh, a lot, but you tell them nothing. Right. <laughs> yes, that's well put. Well put. Because uh, uh, press conference, uh, I disagree that you've been forced for press conference. Right. Okay. Let 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 me observe that. I hate the fact that I that they after game, when I completely emotionally, physically, mentally exhausted every coach, not only me, everyone. Now you're calling me on the mic to discuss the game and this, that's to give the answer to people. And I mean, this is disgusting, right? Mm -hmm. If you sh if you jump into shopping center and shoot half of the people there, and they caught you, they take you to the court, mm -hmm. you still can defend yourself by silence. <laughs> yes. But here they force you to talk. Imagine. So where is democracy there? Yeah. It's not democracy. So I don't force you to talk, are you not capable? Yeah. You cannot think wisely. Right. So the very easy you can say something what you're not supposed to. Yes. Right. Yes. So you just put your highest diplomacy that you can ever have. 
Right. And tell them nothing. Right. That's that, that's the Simple. safest way to do it. And for all the for all the club owners and all the directors of football watching now, your achievements speak volume. But can you just maybe describe what would football look like for a club under Coach Herich? What would it everything look like? It looks like very disciplined. It looks like very dedicated. Everyone must do the job. Uh, and everyone can ask for job description because I used to lecture administrators in my country, yeah. 97, 8, I think, 6, 7, 8 over there. Uh, it's, it's a hard working, but definitely successful. Definitely. Right. So uh, the, 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 the club that I'm, I'm uh, involved with, it's like very hard work, yeah. uh, very dedicated, and it must be disciplined, obviously, and, uh, and I guarantee success. Right. Simple as that. And you, and it's your your what you say is backed by records, of course. Now I won't hold you too long, but just two more questions, just because you know, since say uh, I, we would like to make as much use of your knowledge as possible. So you mentioned about about discipline being such a big part of your of, of your philosophy. So now you will come across players, human beings. You'll come across players who are not always going to be as disciplined as you'd like them to be. So how do you deal with them? Look, uh, if player trusts you, yeah, he will do everything for you, yes. right? To win that trust, what to do? You show the player respect that you that that you that you living his life. Yes. For me, it's easy because I was the player before, right? So something similar what Mourinho do. Mm. I also doing the same things. I I like to see where my player is, where is he living, where is he sleeping, who is he with, yes. how is he family, how is mother, father, how is wife, kids, girlfriend, yes. mistress, everyone. I don't care, I mean, how the, I, I don't care what it's going to look like, because sometimes I say, no, but you're putting the nose in the private life of your player. Right. I have to. Yes. Football, football player have no private life, yes. as a coach as well. Yes. We don't have private life. Everything exposed to them. Yes. Everyone knows about every. Everyone knows about players today. Everyone knows about those wives. Everyone knows about what they are wearing, which yes. watch they are having, which car they drive. Everyone knows everything. We have no. We have no private life whatsoever. Okay. So, in that matters, you also. Pay, uh, Pay respect to your player and to to his family, and also you need to know how is player behaving off the field. Yeah, right. And when player realize that you're working on his personal progress, yes, he start to believe on you. Right. And once you win the heart of your player, you have everything. Right. It makes complete sense. Uh, quite That's a it. thing, but makes complete sense. So yes, now. Then, Yes, go ahead. Whatever you ask, he will do. And that's a discipline. Because yes. his wife has to call me if he's not home 11 o'clock. Yes. She, she has to call me. Or mother if he's young player or whatever. Right, right, right. right. So you're really involved in the overall uh, life and development of a player. And it makes sense because if they are seeing improvements, then they know that you're doing it for their good. So yes, definitely. So just before just before you go, what does the future look like for you? I, do you have a few offers from maybe within South Africa, outside South Africa? What does the future look like for you? I have one uh, one job pending here because tomorrow it's the last game in in first division here. Yes. And I have also one job pending here. Uh, but they finish, they are finished, I think, 30th or 31st of December. And after that, they will take decision. And I have uh, two jobs. One is in Malawi. Another one is national team, but I won't tell you which. Yes, case. of course, of course, of course. That's good. So there's quite yeah, a, you've got quite I a prom point. I, pr 
I promise, Pesa. I keep my promise. Yes, absolutely. It's completely understandable. But you have got quite a choice. You have got four teams that you can pick and choose from, and I'm sure I'm sure they'll all be in a race. For I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. I'll see how it goes. Obviously, I have to. I have to. I have to make right decision, and it's not going to be easy to leave the country. Though. It's going to be tough. Yes. But I'm ready to go wherever. Wherever they call me, I also put my CV in Iran, like okay. before that conflict with, with the in between Israel and yes. Palestine. And uh, there were some people calling, showing the interest. So I'm ready to travel wherever, wherever I, I needed and wherever my knowledge and experience is needed for progress. I'm ready to go anywhere. Absolutely, wherever football takes you. So yeah, this was brilliant. Uh, time yes. really flew. Time really flew listening to you because whatever you have said is of of immense value, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Genuinely, I enjoyed it. Um, we have, oh, I think, the time genuinely just flew off. We didn't even realize that it's been so uh, that you know we have spoken for so long. And thank you so much for taking time out. You're a top level coach in the country, and I am grateful that you have taken taken time out to discuss football. Thank you so much, Ryan, for inviting me for your podcast and uh, see you soon. Thank you.